Hello, welcome to another walk in the spirit. I'm Steve, come with me as we have another walk. We're continuing, this is our second of three videos. I am on vacation. So I'm doing three discipleship walks. All walk in the spirit videos, normal walk in the spirits, nothing special here. Um, but we will be making it simple, easier for me because I'm on vacation. I'm in Keele, Wisconsin. I don't mind sharing that because I'll probably never be here again. A lovely park. All right, the, we're going to talk today, our second discipleship walk today. And today, this video, there's actually three today, we are talking about, sorry for waving the camera. Today, this video, we're talking about abiding in God's Word. Now, last video, I shared that it is important to know God's Word so that you can follow Christ and not be deceived, right? So, today we're going to talk about abiding in His Word. Again, I've never been here. These are interesting trails. Um, and we're going to talk about how important it is. All right, our first scripture is in John 8.31. So go ahead and read that. John 8, 31. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. Very basic, very true, very strong, and very important. As I shared, all these discipleship qualifications are connected. And abiding in his word is, is essential. Again, all these are essential to be disciples. Okay, we're going to fail in them, but we just get back up and uh, we keep going on. Very beautiful location. I'm just going to do a circle here. We, have, we must abide in his word because the word of God is final authority. I didn't put it in my scriptures to read today. Sorry, there's a bug on the camera. I'll put it on the screen. It says, that God put his word above his own name. Put that on the screen. Oh, this is a dead end. Thought it'd be a wider path around the tree. So the word of God is final authority. It's his highest authority. And we must walk in his word, according to his word, by his word, okay? It must be our final authority. Okay, we're gonna, we're, we're not gonna, once we come to know Christ or even decide to follow Christ, we're not gonna know everything. That's why we gotta stay in His Word, be correctable by the Word of God and anybody who gives us the Word of God, right? Because the Word of God is final authority, not our opinion, not our calling, not our church, not our books, not our videos, not Steve's videos, <laughs> okay? God's Word has final authority. All right, let's read our scripture on this. Pull it out. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians 2.14. Let's find a spot here. If here looks good. You're going to hear some construction in the background. Sorry about that. All right. 1 Corinthians 2, 14. All right, here we go. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can they know them because they are spiritually discerned. Oh, sorry for tilting the camera. So if you want to know God's Word, you have to have the Spirit of God. You can't just come to Christ in the flesh and say, oh, I decide today, you know, yesterday I was a heathen. Today I'm just going to jump right in, uh, dive into the Word, seek to learn His Word. But you have to have the Spirit, right? You have to have the Spirit of God to understand the Word. Can someone get saved and, and be born again and have the Spirit right away? Yes, but don't fool yourself, okay? You have to have the Spirit to understand the deep things of God. All right, what's our next? Oh, I love that smell. Smell the pine trees right here is strong. All right, let's read our next scripture. All right, our next scripture is Galatians 2.20. I'm just going to read that one. Well, I have it mostly memorized, and I've shared it many times on this screen, on, on, this, on my channel. 
For I have been crucified in Christ. It is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives me, in me. I probably read, quoted half of it. I'll put the full one on the screen. It's Christ in us when we're born again that the Spirit of God lives in us. Sure, when you believe in Christ, the Scripture says we are sealed with the Spirit. Put that verse or two on the, on the screen. But if we know and understand God's Word, that in the parable of the ten virgins, so this is a dead end, in the parable of the ten virgins, <clears throat> five had extra oil, five did not. Well, what is the extra oil? It's being born again. Believing and being born again are different. I'm not going to get into the full details of that. For more, see my video here. Believing versus born again. Now, by the way, I accidentally did the third video before the second. So this one is a little bit longer than the next one. All right, but let's read our next scripture. Hebrews 10, 25. I'm a little dis distracted today because I've got lots of notes and less pockets. Hebrews 10, 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, as, and so much more as you see the day approaching. So what does that have to do with abiding in His Word? Why does going to church have to do with abiding in His Word? Well, the Scripture says we must continue to go to church even as we see the Lord's second coming approaching. We grow in the Word of God through the ministers of God who are in churches. Now, some of us can't go to church. Some of us, we haven't forsaken the church, but the church, the church has forsaken us. You do what you can. You can get books, teaching books. You can watch Men of God preach on YouTube. Um, you can get CDs, DVDs, audio tapes of ministries that are trustworthy and learn from them. But we need to continue to grow in His Word if we're going to abide in His Word, and thus we need the church. Our next one is Ephesians 4, 11 through 16. I'll just do this. This explains a little bit more of why we need the church. Ephesians 4, 11. And he, gave him, and he himself gave to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So Jesus gave ministers to the church, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, for the equipping of the saints, for the saints, the people of God, to grow in Christ, to have the tools they need to live here and to minister to others. How long? Verse 13. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So these gifts continue to operate until we receive perfection. In other words, until Jesus comes and gets us. That we should no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, by the cunning craftiness and deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head in Christ. That's what I am sharing with you. We need God's Word so that we're not tossed around by all these doctrines. And we need the men of God to do so. Now I do have a video because I know some people don't believe in apostles and prophets. We, they're still available as I just shared. But I have a full video talking about that the gifts of God are still available. You want to learn more, you go here. Alright, what's our next scripture? definitely a very thick trail but they have it nice and wide on the bottom but as you can see it's bushy all right our next one we have three scriptures and then we're done 
Revelation 2, 17. Revelation 2, 17. Let's go in here. Do some fields here, huh? Revelation 2, 17. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna to eat, and I will give him a white stone, and on the stone a new name written which no one knows except himself who receives it. So Jesus says he has hidden manna. Well, what does the manna represent? It's the word, right? We eat the word, we eat the manna. And so he has hidden manna for us. All right, sorry about that. It was getting loud, so I decided to go backtrack and go a different way. So there is hidden manna for us, the mysteries of God. Now, some things are going to remain a mystery because, for example, God told Daniel, seal these things till the end. But I think we're at the end. And it says at the end, they can be unsealed. So I think many mysteries can be revealed to us. But we have to live in the Spirit, have the Spirit, follow God, obey God, show that we show Him that we are obedient to Him and are responsible that He can give us the mysteries, the hidden manna, that He can open the eyes of our understanding, that we may know and understand His Word. All right, John 15, 7. John 15, 7. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. <laughs> How about that? Our prayers can be blessed, heard, received, and given to us, if we abide in Christ, because he knows we're living for him, and not in selfishness. Another wonderful blessing, and good element for us as we follow Christ. We're seeking to serve Him, and He's going to bless us. He's going to provide what we need here in the earth if we continue to walk in His Word and walk in His ways. One more scripture. John 2, excuse me, 2 John 1, 9. 2 John 1, 9. Whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. He who abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. I've talked about this in other videos. And if I can find a specific video on that, you can find it here. But obviously, the Word of God brings us the doctrines of God. And if we don't have the doctrines of God, we do not have God. This is an important element of being a disciple of Christ. Growing, standing in His Word, walking in His Word, eating His Word. It's our life. It's our sustenance. We need to abide and live in the Word of God to be a disciple of Christ. One more walk in the spirit of discipleship. Stay tuned to that. Look forward ahead. God bless. We'll see you again, Lord willing, if we're not raptured, if I'm not censored. God bless, folks. Have a good day. Bye-bye.